Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt, and welcome to my lesson video on multiplication and division of rationals. Now let's get started. Now before we learn how to multiply and divide rationals, let's first look at multiplying and dividing fractions without a calculator. Just a little review. First, let's look at multiplying fractions. Now I have 5 ninths times 3 fourths. Now, if I want to multiply these two together, I actually have two ways I could go about doing this. Now, the first way is I could just start out by multiplying numerator times numerator, which would be 15, and denominator times denominator, which would be 36. Now, I have the fraction 15 over 36. Now, this is correct, but it's not fully simplified. So from this point, I would have to find a greatest common factor and try to simplify it. Well, my greatest common factor would be 3. I could divide the numerator and the denominator by 3. And I'll just do that right here. Remember, if you do something to the numerator, you also have to do it to the denominator. And so when I do that, 15 divided by 3 is 5 and 36 divided by 3 is 12. So this would be my answer. Now there's also another way I could go about doing this. I could look at my fractions and I could say, you know what? My denominator of 9, couldn't I um, rewrite that or expand it to be 3 times 3? Now, you might not actually write this down, but I'm kind of writing down what you might be thinking, okay? So, really, 5 over 9 is the same as 5 over 3 times 3, and we're going to multiply that times 3 times 4. Excuse me, 3 over 4. Now, if you look, I actually have a 3 in my numerator and a 3 in my denominator and those would cancel out because 3 divided by 3, 3 over 3, equals 1. So now that I have found a factor, a common factor, and have canceled it, now I can go ahead from this point and say numerator times numerator, which is 5 times invisible 1, which is 5, and then in my denominator is 3 times 4, which is 12. And so I get the exact same answer. Now I'm showing you the second way because really this is a lot like how we are going to be multiplying and dividing rationals. So I want us to look right here. What did we do? Well, if we look at this second method that I showed you, we cancel the common factors from the numerator and the denominator. That's what we did here. And then we multiply across. Okay? Well now, let's go ahead and look at division, dividing our fractions. We have 2 thirds divided by 7 eighths. Now, I know you learned how to do this in middle school, but I also know that sometimes it's a skill that you might not remember. When dividing by a fraction, it's actually the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. Now remember, reciprocal means you just flip the fraction the numerator and the denominator. So let's take a look at what that would look like. I would have two-thirds, and instead of saying divided by seven-eighths, I can actually say I'm going to multiply it by eight over seven. Okay? So I am multiplying by the reciprocal. Now we can just multiply straight across. I have two times eight, which is 16, and in my denominators I have 3 times 7, which is 21. And so that would be my answer. So basically, what did we do? Well, we flipped the second fraction and then multiplied them together. Okay? Now, like I said, both of these skills that we have just reviewed, we will be using when we multiply and divide rationals. So now why don't we go ahead and get started with learning, how, with learning how to actually multiply the rationals. There are basically three steps to multiplying rationals. Step number one, 
would be to factor the numerators and denominators completely. Step number two would be to cross one numerator and one denominator at a time. And then number three, multiply across, leaving the product in factored form. Now let's look at this example. We have x squared minus 9 divided by x squared plus 7x plus 10 times 4x plus 8 divided by x squared plus x minus 12. Now if we follow our steps, the first thing we want to do is factor the numerators and denominators completely. So first, I'm going to look at this numerator right here. x squared minus 9 is the difference of perfect squares. So that means I can factor it to look like this. x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay, now let's look at this denominator. Well, I have to find my factors of 10 that would add or subtract to equal 7. Well, I know that 5 times 2 is 10, and 5 plus 2 is 7. So there are my factors for this trinomial. It would be x plus 5 times x plus 2. Now let's factor our next numerator. Now here I have a binomial, and so basically I'm finding the GCF, the greatest common factor of the two terms, and then I'm dividing each term by that GCF. So out of 4x plus 8, I know that my GCF is 4, so I'm going to divide each term by 4. 4x divided by 4 is x, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So since I'm dividing by the 4, it goes in front, and then my answer after I divide goes inside the parentheses. Now we've got a trinomial in the denominator, so I need to find my factors of negative 12 that add up to 1. And those factors would be positive 4 and negative 3. So I'm going to say x plus 4 times x minus 3. So there you have it. We just did step number one, and that probably is the step that will take the longest. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at the second step, which says to cross out one numerator and one denominator at a time. Well, I look at my numerator and I see x plus 3. Now I'm going to look at my denominators. Do I see any x plus 3s? No, I don't. So now let's move to the, to the next binomial in the numerator, x minus 3. And if I look down here in the denominator, I do see x minus 3. So I can cross those out because x minus 3 over x minus 3 equals 1. Or I should say x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 equals 1. Now let's continue to look for factors that we can cancel out. So as I move across the numerator, I have this binomial x plus 2. And if I look at my denominator, I have an x plus 2 right there. So I have two more binomials that I can cancel out. Now at this time, if you look, there's nothing else, there's no other binomials that I can cancel out. So now I'm ready to multiply across, which is step number 3, and then leave the product in factored form. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so if I look at my numerator, I have x plus 3 times 4. So I'm going to write that, I'm going to put the 4 in front. You don't have to, but that's usually how it's done, times x plus 3. Okay, so that's my numerator. Now going in my denominator, I have x plus 5 times x plus 4. So I'm going to write that x plus 5 times x plus 4. And that's our answer. Okay, we have just multiplied rational expressions. 
Now let's look at dividing rational expressions. In the two purple circles, you see the two different ways that division problems are expressed. Now, let's look at the two steps. Number one, you take the reciprocal of the divisor and change divide to multiply, meaning change the division symbol to a multiplication symbol. And then the second step is to follow your multiplication rules. And what are those rules? Factor completely, cross out what you can, and then multiply across. So now let's look at an example. We will use the example of x squared plus 11x plus 24 divided by x squared plus 4x minus 32 divided by 4x plus 12 divided by 8x minus 16. Now, my first step is to take the reciprocal of the divisor and change the division symbol to multiplication. Okay, this is my divisor right here. So this is the one I'm going to flip. That's what taking the reciprocal means, is to flip it. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And instead of writing everything over, I'm just going to rewrite the second, the, div the divisor. So that will be 8x minus 16 over 4x plus 12. So I'm actually going to cross this out now. Okay, so now do you see how I have a multiplication problem? Now we are ready to follow our multiplication rules. So let's look at this numerator right here. And I need to find the factors of 24 that add up to 11. Well, those factors are 8 and 3. So I'm going to factor the numerator. x plus 8 times x plus 3. Now, let's look at the denominator. I have to find the factors of negative 32 that add up to 4. Well, um, I believe that would be 8 and 4, okay? 8 minus 4 is 4, and 8 plus, times negative 4 is negative 32. So I'm going to write that. And I said, what did I say, x um, plus 8? times x minus 4. Okay, so we've just factored the first fraction. Now we're going to factor the second one. Now, it's a binomial, so all I need to do is find my greatest common factor, and I need to divide by that. So, 8 and 16, my greatest common factor is 8. So, 8x divided by 8 is x. Negative 16 divided by 8 is negative 2. Now I'm ready to factor the denominator. My GCF is 4, so I'm going to be dividing each term by 4. 4x divided by 4 is x, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So I've just factored it completely, and now I'm ready to cross out um, the numerator and denominator that would cancel each other out. So if I start at the beginning, I see I have a numerator of x plus 8. I also have a denominator of x plus 8. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel those out, cross those out. Now I'm looking at my next binomial in the numerator. It's x plus 3. And yes, I do have one in the denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel those out, or cross those out. Now, I'm going to go on to the next binomial, which is x minus 2, and this is x minus 4. They're not alike, so I can't cancel them out. But what I do notice right here is I have 8 divided by 4. Well, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I can put a 2 here. And 4 divided by 4 is 1. So now I have crossed out everything that I can. And so now I'm ready to do, to do the last step, which is to multiply across. So let's see here. Uh, if I look at my numerator, the only thing left in my numerator is the 2 and the x minus 2. 
So that will be 2 times x minus 2. And then if I look at my denominator, the only thing I have left is x minus 4. And so that is my answer. I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about multiplication and division of rationals, and I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.